It's not a throttle, it's a thrust controller. Thrust! Death on wheels. Let's open the thrust controller. Whoa! Big girls can be a lot of fun to ride though. Today I'm riding the most technologically advanced Kawasaki ever produced. This is the 2022 H2 SX. This is the base version. This is the one without the touring packs and everything. This is, this is, this is the base, but even in the base model, you get things like adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, crash avoidance. You know, that this thing has all of the bells and whistles in a package which is incredibly smooth, incredibly beautiful to ride. <laughs> Join me today where I'm going to be doing a first ride on this machine. I've got this for a couple of weeks from Kawasaki UK. I'm going to be going on a bit of a trip with this in another video, so we're going to take it for a bit of a long run, see what the comfort's like, see what the fuel economy's like. But today, this is a first ride to get to know the machine. So if that sounds of interest, Grab yourself a cup of tea and Chopsy, roll the intro. So the eagle-eyed amongst you would have noticed on my Ultimate Garage build first episode, there was this little Kawasaki sort of in, in the background in some of the, some of the shots. And some people said, oh, if I missed something, has Chopsy got a new bike? Well, no, this is just a loaner from Kawasaki. My first ever uh, loan from Kawasaki UK. Kawasaki UK are finally catching up and uh, doing, doing loans to people like me. <coughs> Not beds, basically. So we're going to go for a little bit of a spin just around the local countryside. You know, just to see what this bike's like, try and get some sort of tight twisties in, test out the handling. But as you can see, for this year, we'll do a full walk around of this a bit later on, but you can see they sleekened up the whole front of the bike. I mean, look at the, how smooth the lines are, how aerodynamic that looks from the front now. And, you know, different sort of headlights. Yeah, I, I think they've... Uh, They've sort of really cleaned and, and tidied up the look of this bike, even though it's got things like the adaptive cruise control, you know, which is normally like a, makes the bikes a bit ugly because you've got a lot of time it's just a flat piece. They've got like a curved piece around the adaptive cruise control on the Kawasaki. So that's a little bit more in keeping and it doesn't stand out straight away as to say, look, I've got adaptive cruise control. Look how ugly I am. <laughs> it is keyless, which I'm not a great fan of. And you've got sort of like a, a key thing to turn here so it's a bit it's a bit weird i mean i'd rather just have a key you know my views on uh, keyless lots of you but we've got a new screen on this bike much better screen layout than the old uh, sx i did like the original with the sort of analog gauge and the uh, and the uh, uh tft but it's all in tft now but it's very clear quite classy looking the tft and that's sort of one of the criticisms i've had in the past with the with the Kawasaki TFTs, they could be a little bit gimmicky, but it's much nicer, much more classy on this. Giving it a little tickle. I've got a Ninja H2, so I'm, I'm very familiar with this power plant, but this bike is completely different to my Ninja H2, and I can't believe that. I mean, this, this is smoother than my Ninja. I thought my Ninja was incredibly smooth, but this thing is so smooth. I mean, I can't even really feel any vibrations from the bike at all. It's buttery smooth and the power delivery is just, it's, it's like a locomotive. It just builds and it's so smooth and there's no massive rah, like you get with a, you know, a 200 horsepower sports bike. It's just smooth, progressive, incredible. It's 197 horsepower, so 200 horsepower nylon. 138 newton meters of torque so a massive amount of, to of torque i mean the super duke's 140 newton meters that's almost as much torque as, as a 1300 twin you know and that torque is at eight and a half thousand revs so pretty low down the rev range and and that's how they've tuned this bike different from my ninja h2 which is the power kicks in about eight and it, you know things go ballistic this builds to that so you don't have that initial you know, it doesn't punch as much, but it's just smoother. The riding position, again, is fantastic. I mean, I have ridden the previous generation of this bike, and I liked it, you know, I thought it was nice, but it didn't blow me away 
and this version, I don't know what Kawasaki have done, I know they've made the seat wider and thicker and more comfortable, I don't know if they've changed any other of the ergos, but for me, I feel like I could sit on this bike and ride it all day long, it's incredibly comfortable, you've got a tiny, tiny amount of weight on your wrist, because the, the, the clip-ons are above the yokes, I've got sort of, I'd say, five to eight percent of my weight on my wrist so you just get a little bit of weight over the front wheel to give you a bit of feel but more, more or less everything is is through my bottom and the seat is wide and thick we'll see how we get on when we take it for a bit of a longer run but i think this is going to be sublimely comfortable the foot pegs are in a nice position that they're certainly not high you know they're they're certainly not sports bike high they're, they're a comfortable position but they're back a little bit so you've got you know you've got a little slightly sporty feet position but i'm sure even long distance that's not going to be a problem so as i mentioned this is the non se version so this doesn't have electronic suspension as everything else all of the other stuff like the, the the radar detection for the rear you know, the blind spot detection which a little light is integrated into the mirrors which is really neat it's got the crew the adaptive cruise control you know it's got all of the electronic uh, features that the se has but just doesn't have the electronic suspension and to be honest so far i mean the ride is beautifully plush beautifully plush let's have a little throw around here yeah, it, it is a big bike, and we're behind a, a massive tractor. Death on wheels. What looks like some sort of mad octopus muck spreader, isn't it? Woo, we're through. I don't want that going off on me. The weight is a rather hefty 260 kilos wet, so you know it's a big, it's a big motorcycle. The H2, even my you know full ninja version is not known for its lightness you know adding superchargers add, adding aluminium plenums you know it all adds weight to a motorcycle so it's not the lightest but it's how it handles that weight and direction changes are pretty nimble actually but it's definitely sort of a big smooth powerful bike you know it, it's not going to be a track machine obviously but uh, i think at the moment i'm pretty impressed the bars are nice and wide so you've got that leverage through the bars the se has stylemas so this has kawasaki branded calipers but i wouldn't know there's there's a lovely feel progressiveness to the brakes i mean that's what you want you know normally big heavy bikes the brakes can feel a little bit wooden and you, you feel like you really got to pull them but there's even with minimal pressure on the lever you've got loads of stopping power so n not once do you think hang on am i going to stop here you know you've got that confidence in the in the brake setup the rear brake is not so good you know you, if the rear brake isn't brilliant but yeah that's sort of more of a sports bike thing they never are that good so you've got to ride this like a sports bike you know don't drag the rear brake to knock off speed into corners you ride this like a proper sports bike and do your braking up front and that's why those front stoppers are delicious. On those delicious brakes, down through the quick shifter blipper. It's got a quick shifter blipper, by the way. Quite a tight little roundabout there. <laughs> Try and keep the speeds down. Jeez. It's not easy on this. Yeah, you've got to watch it. Because it builds so low down, you've really got to keep your eye on that speed, eh? Or you could find yourself in the naughty chair. <laughs> in front of the judge right we're gonna head sort of over goodwood way there's some brilliant sort of faster corners around now i want to see what this is like through tight stuff but also you know on faster corners i think that that is where this is gonna gonna excel because as you lean this bike it does feel a little bit heavy sort of as it goes over so sort of initial impressions but let's see it could be one of those bikes which just takes a little bit of time to get used to it glides over the tarmac you, you don't get a masses of feel from the tarmac but this you know this is a touring machine you don't always want masses of feedback constantly from the tires and because this is the you know the non-se with, with, with non-electronically adjustable suspension obviously you can get your spanners out but they've set it for plushness and you know, they've set it to glide over the tarmac which is how I'd want it on this sort of bike, but it does remove a little bit of the texture. You know, you struggle to feel 
the finer details of the road a little bit so you had to put a little bit more faith in the tires you know that, that they're gonna grip but uh, I'm sure they will <laughs> and into the 60 oh, so powerful so much thrust you know it is thrust on this that's the best way to describe it when you open the throttle it's like thrust it's like turbine power well I guess it has a, has a turbine on it so it sort of explains it but it's just that oh, it just oh, it just goes it's not a throttle it's a thrust controller yeah the brakes are lovely at scrubbing off speed just with a one finger loads of feel through the brakes yeah as you get to that start to lay it over you do you, know, you do have to put a bit of faith in in the tires there because it does lack a little bit of feedback as it starts to go over thrust oh jeez i'm going too fast scrub off some speed don't don't do it mate don't do it you stay there this is a really bumpy section of road here so beautifully suspended you know it's not crashy it's that plush feel there is a uh, preload adjuster a manual preload adjuster on the rear which is quite handy so I, I have wound a bit more preload into the rear shop so if you do add the luggage and a pillion you know you do have a, even though it's an electronic you can manually adjust preload which is great even though this is a touring machine if I'm going on tour I want my bike to be able to handle when I get to my twisties I don't want to think oh this would have been great if I bought this other bike when I got here <laughs> I expect this to do everything yeah it's nice shame there's campers in the way let's open the thrust controller whoa whoa Get it further up that rev range. It absolutely flies. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's, it's surprising for such a big girl. You know, big girls can be a lot of fun to ride though. Whoa, wheels up. Yeah, that's quick. That's fast. That's that's fast and furious. You know, when, when you want it to be. It, it's a pussycat it's a pussycat sometimes but you open the taps wow it really goes this this is a, this is a beautiful machine well the weather's starting to gray over and the wind's getting up temperatures dropping it's going to be raining shortly so let's very quickly do a little walk around so these are those calipers i was telling you about so kawasaki i don't know what they are they say kawasaki on them but surprisingly good performance from those and i see they've got braided lines and stuff for standard front forks a kyb and i say really impressive with uh, the performance from this standard suspension i think they've got it set up you know absolutely perfectly as i showed at the beginning the front of the bike i, I love how this looks from the front now i mean look how sleek that looks and how sort of integrated everything looks i think they've done a great job on the styling of the front end and still keeping that obvious sort of h2 look this side is just a blank with the little fins here and then this side is the inlet to the supercharger so that's where all that air goes sucked in to that supercharger and you've got a lovely little uh, led light on the front there here's the adaptive cruise control radar assist as it says there so that's all integrated and smooth you know it's not obvious but it's got radar which some bikes are I haven't showed it in this video but that's the you know the rear radar detectors so that little light triangle comes on within the mirrors when someone is in your blind spot the heart of the beast the supercharged h2 engine i mean that's the back of the supercharger here you can just see actually that the supercharger housing is green on this bike we'll look from the other side in a minute but that's your supercharger all your supercharger gears are all you know wound from here so there's chains around here running the supercharger and uh, it's a hell of a power plant that it's a hell of a power plant there's the rear preload adjuster the manual preload adjuster 
to the rear KYB shock, which is tucked in there. And as you can see, fully adjustable. Probably the, the, the worst part of the bike, the bit I don't like, is the back lights. You know, I'm not sure about the design of the back lights, but that's a personal thing. And then here on the tail tidy, you've got the radar for the rear um, blind spot detection. Again, integrated quite well, but would mean you'd really struggle to fit any sort of tail tidy because all the radar is integrated into the back end. Single sided swinging arm. So unlike the ZH2, the SX keeps the full single sided swinging arm like the H2 Ninja. This is the inlet side to the supercharger. So that air from the front scoop runs along behind the fairing and is sucked directly into the supercharger. I mean, this thing shifts an incredible amount of air through that supercharger. I've actually done a video all about the H2, about my H2, and why the bike is so special. This, this engine and this bike. I'll put a link to it on the screen at the top there. So if you want to have a look and see why the H2 is such an incredible machine and you know, an engineering masterpiece, watch that vid, all will be explained. Turning it on, that new screen is pretty sexy. Yeah, it's, it's all the menus are very nice on here. You know, it's got everything you really want to get to on here. Sport, you've got different modes, obviously, you know, You've also got tyre pressure monitors as well. Uh, I mean, lean angle sensors, 30 maximum lean angles, 35, 36. So there is the Ninja H2 SX. Let's jump back on. I ride bikes like this and I think, oh, you know, this, this, I think, could be one of those bikes which can really do everything I'd want from a motorcycle. Beautifully smooth, comfortable, you know, an absolute mile muncher, you know, a pleasure to get on. You know, you just ride a bike and it's just so, it's just so right. Even just poodling round, it just brings you such, such pleasure from, from riding it. And this is one of those bikes. And then when you do want to push on, you want to go a bit quicker. Yeah, you, you know, it's not going to do any track work. I mean, it's not, it's too big, heavy, but just for a fast road machine, you know, a touring bike, and you've got, you know, facilities to plug on the luggage on the back, grab your gear, chuck some pants in, and go, you know, go wherever you want. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm really going to be interested to see how, what this, what this is like on a longer ride. You know, take it somewhere, tune in for the next video to see what it's like on a longer run. Turbine! Oh, my God! Past the corner, set it up, get your speed right. You know, you can go on the front brake, it doesn't unsettle the bike. You know, a nice sports bike out there. I'm not dragging the rear like I was on a big adventure bike. You know, normally a bike 260 kilos, I'll be dragging on the rear to stop unsettling it. Right, let's give it a little bit of Wellington first gear. Jeez, the front wheel. Did you see the front wheel? Whoop. That is fast. That is very, very fast and so smooth. I mean, it doesn't have that massive hit at the top like you'd get, you know, on a 200 horsepower. S1000 double R or something. It's that mid range and the way it gets to that top end, that top of the rev range. That's what's most impressive about it. Just smooth, unadulterating. Oh, I'm going to have to do that again. It's addictive. Rocket ship. I mean, even on the fuel consumption, it says I'm doing 43 miles per gallon as an average. 43.7. Bike's got a 19 litre fuel tank. It's got a fuel gauge, obviously, distance still empty, but it seems to do decent mileage. You know, I, I think Kawasaki have cracked it. They, they've seemed to make this bike not use too much fuel. I know the original one was a very thirsty machine. And then the one I tried last year was surprise, or the year before, the previous generation to this. That was surprisingly frugal. Frugal? You know, for such a big supercharger, you know, if you do what I've been doing back there all the time, you're gonna use fuel, obviously. But just ridden normally, 
it's really not that thirsty and I say even 43 miles per gallon I'm averaging even with a bit of bit of naughtiness really impressive so there we go the Ninja H2 SX it's an incredible bike absolutely <laughs> incredible if you've enjoyed this review as I say this will just be my first ride impressions of this bike I'll do a follow-up, we'll go into much more detail of looking, looking at the screen, going through the electronics, test out all the things I haven't done in this video. You know, the, uh, the other electronic features like the adaptive cruise control, the blind spot detection, we'll give that a full test in the follow-up video. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button and I uh, will see you on the next video. Cheers guys. Longworth Cove. We're going to the seaside and it's raining. How very British. Vanilla butterscotch cream. Did I pack my speedos? Let's see if we can get out of the rain. Salisbury is a little bit annoying.